Okay, today I'm going to talk about web graphics and uh, mostly making graphics in Photoshop and Illustrator that you can use on a website. And so my first example today will be mostly about uh, background. So we'll get, come back to this graphic I have here. I'm going to start with a, a, a new file inside of Photoshop. And what I want to do is talk about backgrounds on websites. Now, typically, if you look at a web page on the internet, and let's just go to the internet real kind of quick, you'll see different co colors maybe for your background. Now, this one has a kind of a brown color, and my website has this sort of white, and then a tan, and then a little red line that goes across, and a little black line up here. This is basically uh, the only background for this website is really just a black and red line up here. This is basically just plain HTML, the rest of it. So this is, or CSS in this case, cascading style sheets. So my background for my website is not a very sophisticated type of background. There's just a little graphic that's up here at the very top of the page, which is a red and black. And basically how website or how web backgrounds are done is usually you make a, a little graphic and you tile it. What tiling means is it places one graphic next to the other graphic and sort of makes it into a, a new graphic. So what I mean by that is uh, in this case, this this red line and, and black line are could possibly be just a little graphic that is small little square that then is tiled or, or copied across the top of the page. And uh, so you'll see when I when I make a graphic and put it onto a web page what I mean by tiling and how it how it, it blends it from one area to the other. So let me make just a small graphic uh, inside of, of Photoshop. I'm just start with a new file. Um, and there's some presets in there inside of Photoshop where you can go down to where it says web right here and inside web you can choose what size you want. Now by default under web they have a variety of sizes. These are mostly basic screen sizes, you know, small monitors, medium sized monitors, large monitors, and that's sort of what these are. So you can sort of make graphics that are the right size for specific type of monitors. Or they also have these options inside of Photoshop for um, these are, are basic ads, okay? So the ads that you would see on Yahoo and stuff, these are plain, plain size ads that you would see on Yahoo. And so that's what these presets are. But in this case, I'm just going to make something that's 100 pixels by 100 pixels just for an example right now. So you can see what I mean by a, a tiled background. So I'm going to make 100 pixels by 100 pixels. And everything that we do, if you watch the, the intro video for this, you'll see everything we do will be at 72 DPI for our website. And, and we could use a transparent background, so that's OK. I'm going to hit OK which gives me a small sort of graphic. You can tell what size it's going to be when you're working inside of Photoshop, what size it will be on your web site when you see it at 100% zoom factor. If you zoomed in a little bit at 200%, that's not what size it's going to be on your website, and you're working at 200%, that's not, it's going to be smaller. And if you're zoomed out, like at 66.7, which is a common zoom factor in Photoshop, it would be smaller than what it would see. So when you're working inside of Photoshop, make sure you're looking at the percentage factor up here for the size that will be on your website. In this case, when it's at 100% right here, that is the size it will be on your website. So one of the let's just talk basically about making backgrounds for websites. Usually a background is something that's very subtle that doesn't sort of take over your web page so that when you put text and things and photos and other things over top of a web page, you don't have it very busy background. One of the problems with a lot of things I see, especially on homemade websites, on the ones that are, you know, on uh, on on those free sites, um uh They'll, they'll have, you know, people just putting photos and things like that in their background, and it's really hard to read the text. So whenever you make a background for a website, sort of make it nice and, 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 and simple so that text and other things that are over top of it will, will be able to read it. So I'm just going to make a, a, do a little drawing here We're using a, the brush tool, and, and let me get a bigger, little bigger brush here. And, uh, um, oh, I just lost my document. Here it is. And uh, usually, um, for this example, I'm just going to draw with gray. Use kind of a, a, a light reddish gray. It's going to be kind of dark just so that you can see it. And let's do, uh, we'll make a Halloween website. We'll do a little skull face here. Skull with little eyes. And little skull nose. Okay, so we drew a little graphic that you see here inside of Photoshop. Let me darken it a little bit here. Let's just add a little bit more color in here so we can see it. 
a little bit different so you can see it, and there's more than just one. And we'll put some red teeth in here for our skull. Okay, so we drew a little bit of graphic that we have inside of Photoshop, and we're going to use it as a background for a web page. Uh, to save it, uh, I'm gonna. There's a variety of different formats that you could save graphics as. If I go under File, Save for Web and Device, is what I use, and there's a whole bunch of different formats underneath uh, the formats under Save for Web and Device. You have GIF, JPEG, PNG8, PNG24, and WBMP. So we'll talk about these as we go along today, but today I'm just going to use a GIF, and when you use a GIF, you can see it makes a palette for it, and the less colors you put in your palette, the smaller the file. If you look in the corner, you'll see this is 7.896K, and if I change the amount of colors in it down to, let's say, 32, you'll see it's only 3.68K, and you can't really tell the difference in here because this graphic doesn't have a lot of color in it. The other thing you'll notice is there's something called matte right here. The matte is usually a background color that you might have on a web page. And we'll talk a little bit more about matte later on. But for this example, I'm not going to use any background color. And I'm going to choose my matte as uh, white. Okay, so this is assuming that all the other parts of my background on my website will be white. And so that's all I'm going to do for this little small graphic that I made. And I am going to save it now by hitting the save button which is out of view here let me move my window up a little bit oh you can't even see it hold on there we go I'm gonna hit the save button down here inside of here and tell it where I wanna go and I have a lot of mess on my website so bear with me and so this would be just a background example one so I'm gonna save it okay and then I'm just gonna use Dreamweaver to demonstrate some of my um, what I'm doing and for backgrounds I'm not gonna really go over Dreamweaver too much this is more of how to make the graphics for a web page and not necessarily about Dreamweaver so Dreamweaver is a program that you can use to build a basic web page uh, you can use it to write the HTML for you and so that's what we're gonna do right now I'm just gonna open up Dreamweaver which I am in right now and I'm gonna start with a new file so file new inside of Dreamweaver and I'm gonna make a simple HTML page no none of these presets that are in there so blank HTML page and I'm gonna hit create and then for my background example we're gonna talk about it tiling so to, to, to put a background inside of Dreamweaver on your web page, I use the the insert or no the modified page property option. Under modified page property inside of of uh, Dreamweaver is where you could tell what kind of background you want. So I'm going to use a, a CSS option and CSS stands for cascading style sheets. And usually when you're um, putting uh, graphics onto a web page, you usually put it on using some kind of CSS. And basically, what CSS is is how the page is laid out, and then HTML is the code that sort of uh, runs the uh, page. So, HTML is, is the part that uh, um, is the code that puts the stuff on there. CSS is how it looks, and that's why it says appearance CSS here. And so, under the um, the page properties here. If I choose the background image right here where it says browse, where it says background image, I'm going to choose my little skull head thing that I've made. Um, and uh, it's to give me an error message because it says I haven't saved my HTML yet and it won't let me save my HTML here. So let me save that first before so we don't get any more messages. Let me save the, the HTML file. And uh, just call it background one. Okay, so it was giving me an error message because I didn't save my HTML. So f now let me do that again. It's under Modify Page Properties. And in this case, I'm going to use the Background Image option. I'm going to hit Browse. I'm going to choose my Background Image, and I'm going to hit OK. Now it doesn't give me the message. And then um, traditionally, if I just hit Apply, you'll see what happens. It tiles the background. So if I hit Apply here, you can just see what it's going to do. It's going to put one skull next to another skull, next to another one, next to another one. This is called tiling. So that's why it's a small 100 pixel by 100 pixel kind of image that in traditional web page design would be tiled from one area to the other. And so that's why you see all these little skull heads here. But using the CSS option, we can make more unique and interesting kind of backgrounds by using the repeat option. In the repeat option, I can say, okay, repeat, no repeat, and hit apply. It'll only put one on there. That's one idea. Uh, repeat, we already saw that. Um, or we could say repeat X, 
which will have it repeat across the page, or we're going to have it repeat Y, which has it repeat down the page. So these are options that you could use to make a web page background. Uh, and as you can see, we can make very unique backgrounds by using these options of repeating and how you have the graphics going up and down or across the page. So uh, let me make some more in more interesting backgrounds using some of the repeat features so that you can see how they are done. And uh, we'll do that in the next video.